Yo guys, what's up? It's me, Nicholas Pro here, and welcome back into another video. Now, I tried converting this map that I created a few years ago from data packs to command blocks, and apparently it hasn't gone too well. The map is completely broken, and uh, yeah, this is very really trippy to look at. Also, if I try doing this, yeah, this is gonna cause a lot of pain. Anyway, yeah, why did the map glitch like this? And most of all, how did I convert the entire map into command blocks? These are some que- oh my gosh, I need to stop this, stop this. Okay, there you go. These are some questions that are gonna be answered today. But finally, I will be able to show you once and for all that command blocks are bad and you should not use them. And the only reason my converter didn't work is because command blocks are bad and not because I'm bad at coding. Now, before watching this video, I strongly suggest you to watch the other video that I recently did on the channel, because their uh, stuff actually worked correctly. But yeah, you don't have to do that, but I'm just gonna summarize it a second. Basically, my idea was to take a map that used command blocks and translate those command blocks into a Minecraft data pack, and make that be done completely automatically by a Python tool. And now that tool is actually there, and it actually works, and you can check it out by looking at that video. But today we're not gonna be doing stuff that works, today we're gonna be doing the exact opposites. Today we're gonna be doing stuff that doesn't work. So yeah, this is gonna be fun. So basically what I want to do is take a map that is done with data packs and convert it entirely into command blocks, which is literally the opposite that we did in the other video. Now, when I started this challenge, I thought it was gonna be really simple because it's much easier. I mean, it's easier to read from a text file than it is from to read from freaking Minecraft command blocks. So it's gonna be so much easier to just read from the file, place the blocks in the right place, and there you go, it's, it should be done. This is how it works. But no, right at the end of development, I figured out something that I never wanted to figure out, or that I at least wanted to figure out sooner. That basically, this entire idea was a bust, because Minecraft command blocks are inefficient and bad. But yeah, let's start from the beginning. I'm gonna show you how this converter actually works. It's pretty similar to the one I did in the other video, so this is why it's really confusing. Oh yeah, and also I think it broke the world for some reason, like I cannot, like my Minecraft crashed, so that's just great. Anyways, let me create another copy of mechanism, which is the map we are gonna test at, because this is the only only map that I created completely out of data packs. So this is our beautiful data pack, as you can see, that uh, um, you know I used for this map. By the way, I take in the time to say you should really play this map. It's a cool puzzle map, like Sokoban puzzles, but with a lot of features. And you, there is also a custom level editor, so you should really play it. There is gonna be a link to the trailer in the description if you are interested. Anyway, yeah, this was the map I'm using as a guinea pig. Alright, so let's use our script to convert it into command blocks. So you just have to copy the path to the data pack. And then you just have to run my script and you have to add these parameters. So the path to the data pack and then the coordinates you want the command blocks to be placed. Now, if Minecraft actually died, I could actually show you in-game what happens. Can you die, please? Okay, thank you very much. While Minecraft is loading, I'm gonna show you also these different parameters. You can basically change the offset X and Y of the command blocks, so how much space separates each chain. Also, you can uh, choose how many chains are in a row, and we're gonna mess with that parameter in a sec if my Minecraft doesn't go in my face, okay, there you go. You can also force it, just like the data pack converter, you can delete a data pack that is already there, because in order to actually place the blocks in the world, I'm actually using a data pack that I'm generating myself. So I'm taking the original data pack, I'm extrapolating the commands, and then I'm placing them in the world with a new data pack that you can delete afterwards. Like, we only need that data pack for the first time you enter, and then you wouldn't need it anymore. Then there is delete data pack to delete the original data pack, but honestly I don't suggest this option because most of the times data pack also contain other information other than functions, so you should really not delete the data pack, but just delete the, the function folder. And then this segment function parameter, I'm gonna show you later what it does, it's a possible solution, it's not actually a solution, it breaks everything up even more. Anyway, yeah, this is how the map is actually supposed to work, so if we go and play a new game, as you can see, I'm gonna be starting uh, to be able to play. By the way, if you wanna play this map, you can play it in the description, blah blah blah. Anyway, I actually want to place the command blocks right here. So let's go right here, let's do set block, and then take the coordinates, and then we can put these coordinates right into our uh, script. So let's put the path, let's put the coordinates, and then we're gonna make it so... Uh, Alright, so first of all, there is going to be an offset in the X direction of uh, 2, so command blocks are going to be spaced by 2 uh, on the X axis, so there is going to be a 1 block gap, basically. And on the Y axis, I actually want more gap, so there is going to be a 2 block gap. And also, uh, for every row, we want a bunch of command blocks, we're going to be like 10 chains of command blocks. Oh yeah, you always have to add quotations when the path has a space in it, or it's not going to work, so let's add quotation marks. And there you go, it's gonna do the thingy thing, 
and now we just have to go back into Minecraft, do slash reload, and magic coming soon. Nothing is gonna happen, no magic is gonna happen, this is sad. Oh, okay, it was just loading for some reason, it took a really long time, okay, that's that's weird. But anyway, he placed all of the command blocks into the world, and this does exactly what would you expect it to do. It will basically read into every single, uh, let me see, okay, I still have the data back. It will read every single file. Okay, and every file is going to be a different chain. And now, if the chain is uh, located in the tick.json, so right here, if the chain is right here, then it's going to be a repeating chain. If it's not right here, then it's going to be an impulse chain. And so, yeah, that's basically how that logic works. And so, all the other chains are going to just be uh, needs redstone and are going to be callable, but uh, the repeating ones are actually the ones that you know come from the tick function also if you see a red block here it means that this uh, file exists but it doesn't have any functions so if i search for that file which is spawner i think i'm not gonna find it naturally because i'm bad okay but yeah there is not any functions in this file and this is why it generated the block but didn't actually spawn the command blocks because there are not any command blocks now every single block that it spawns this first block actually disables itself so disables its own chain and then all of these blocks are all of the different command blocks in the data pack all right and then another thing that i did naturally is every time you call a function so every time we did i don't know if i can find it right now uh this is gonna be bad let me find it right here so if i do uh then you go function so this is gonna show me all of the call to the functions. So for example, this is the change level info file and we're calling mechanism save level. So right here in change level info file, uh, am I gonna find it ever? Okay, there you go, change level info. So in this chain, as you can see, the second command block is gonna do a data merge block. So I will basically replace all of the function calls to actually enabling the correct chain in my uh, commands. So this is actually the chain that is going to save the level and as you can see it's only one command and it's only one command because this function is only one command. So you may say, Nico, this is perfect, why doesn't this work? And that's what I want to know too, because you may think, well Nico, this is working, this is so good and dandy, but let me actually just, oh, I, I did a mess, okay, let me actually just delete the data pack right here. So this is the old data pack, I'm just going to delete the functions I guess, yes, there you go. And I guess I'm going to delete the tags as well, at least the function tags, so it's not going to give me any problems. And then we're going to reload, and then just to show you that there are not any tricks to this, I'm also going to delete the data pack that was generated in order to actually place the blocks. So basically this data pack, the only thing that it has is, uh, uh, you know, block placement. So it only has one function, that is the function that places every single one of these commands. So it's a little bit crazy, but basically, oh, did I mess up my computer? Oh no. Okay, my, my computer crashed for a second, I don't know why. Anyway, all of these command blocks were placed by this function right here. So this is why it lagged a real bunch. It executed all of these commands in a one tick. These are like 2,000 commands. Okay, yeah, I can see now why it lags. But yeah, it will also do stuff like force load. So it will also load the correct chunks. So you're not gonna have any problems. Anyway, yeah, we don't need this anymore. We only have to do this once. So we did it. And yeah, now that we have... Okay, I need to stop doing that. Okay, now that we have everything, we can just do reload. And now the map is completely working from these command blocks. It's not using the data pack anymore. We deleted the data pack. And you may think, well, Nico, this is going to work, right? Why doesn't this work? And you might be slightly correct, uh, except not. Yeah, none of this stuff works. And as soon as I reset the devil, this happens, which is really trippy. You might say, Nico, why is this happening? Like, why? Nico, th the logic is perfect. Now, there might be that I did a mistake in the logic itself. Uh, it's possible. But it's also possible that I'm onto something and that command blocks are bad. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean and you guys are gonna figure out why this doesn't work. And it's actually pretty funny once you think about it. Except for the fact that I lost like an entire day trying to code this. But you know, a, a fun video turned out out of it and maybe you learned something out of it. So you know, you can learn from my mistakes. Alright, in order to show you why this doesn't work, I have to go into another world which is less messy than this. Except not, except Minecraft is gonna crash again. Minecraft, why did you do this? Oh, by the way, in order to actually make this work, I had to update Mechanism to 1.19.2, so you can actually play Mechanism in the newest version of Minecraft, and I'm trying to re-upload it on Realms as well. So you will be able to play this map in the latest version of Minecraft, and you can already play that for free on a server, uh, on the Sticky Piston server trials, so you can check that out in the description. Alright, so wait, uh, what what the heck? What What is happening? Uh, I'm confused. Oh, wait, I don't have permissions. I was gonna say, what, what is happening? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was messing around with it on my own because I was trying to not mess with my brain too much, but I think I figured out what is going wrong. 
So let's say we have a command block that says say hi one, okay? Then we have another command block in the chain that says say hi two, and then we have another one that says say three. So here you go, we have this simple chain. And now I'm gonna do a little funny thing and just place a lever right here, and it's gonna say hi one, hi two, and hi three. Now you may say, Nico, this is stupid, why are you showing me this? Because what if, instead of i2, we put i2 right here, okay? And then, instead of this command, we do, we do data merge block here, auto 1b. So basically what is going on is, this command block will say hi1, this command block will activate this command block that will say hi2, and this command block will say hi3. Is this what you think is gonna supposed to happen? That is not even correct English, Nico. But do you think this will happen? Really, do you think this will happen? I'm, I'm asking you right now, because, uh... That definitely does not happen. So basically this command block executes first, then this command block executes second, and then this one happens. You may say, bruh, what is this? Why is, does this happen? The reason why this happens is because this command block gets turned to always active immediately. So it gets turned to always active as soon as this command block executes. But the problem is, command blocks are limited. They only execute at the start of the tick. And why is it raining? So yeah, you need to wait for this chain to finish, and only then this command block will realize, oh, I'm supposed to be running, and then it will start running. So yeah, because of this stupid thing, my converter doesn't work, because Minecraft functions actually don't work like that. Because if I were to have a function right here that was like function say hi dot hi to, for example, and I executed this code, then this is the order of operations that would have occurred. So it's hi1, the function gets called and it says hi2 immediately and then it's hi3. But yeah, this doesn't happen because Minecraft commands are delayed by one tick. It's kinda like if you were using a repeater, really. Like if you want to activate one command block remotely from another command block, you need to have this delay. There is no way around this. I mean, I literally cannot rewind time, okay? There is a physical limitation here and there is no way getting past it. Now, I found a few solutions to get past it, but they are really crazy and, you know, they are not supposed to work, but they are just crazy solutions that maybe one of you can implement because I'm too lazy to do so. So this is why I'm making this video. Anyway, the first solution is to never use functions at all. So basically, when you see a function call in the datapack code, you just replace it with the body of the function. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but if the function is like 20 lines long and it gets called 10 times, you're gonna have 200 command blocks, just like that. So yeah, this is crazy, and also I want it to be there because I'm scared. But yeah, so this is crazy to do, but it would technically solve the problem, because the, the problem only occurs when you are calling other functions. But the other side effect would be that the command blocks will literally be one big repeating chain. And then, you know, this chain will have every single function stripped and put into it. It's gonna be really, really crazy. It's gonna be like a, maybe a, I don't know, a 10,000 command blocks long chain for a map like mechanism. Even more, maybe. And then there is another problem, which is recursion. I mean, I'm using functions uh, recursively because one function is calling the other one under certain conditions, and that function is calling itself again. So uh, you cannot use recursive functions. Oh my gosh, the weather, it's, it's so bad. So yeah, this solution works, but you cannot use recursive functions or, you know, uh, any cycle of function calls if you use this solution. There is another solution that I tried and was basically adding a manual delay. And uh, this is what I tried and I'm gonna actually show you it in action. But unfortunately, this solution doesn't work because you don't know how much delay you have to add. So basically, we will try to add a delay by, uh, you know, trying to replicate the Minecraft code. So every time we run a function, instead of just running that function and calling it, we are also going to do a fun thing that is going to be this. So instead of just calling the function, we're going to call the function and then we're going to do this little trick here. We're basically going to activate this other chain and make it run. So why am I doing this? Because this is basically a one tick delay. Uh, we already know, as we already stated, that data merge block will create a one tick delay. So I'm calling the function and then I'm generating this one tick delay. So now in theory, with this setup, stuff should run in order. So I'm gonna show you it, uh, you know, in, uh, in place right now. So I can have say one, and then I can have a data merge block here, auto one B. So it will activate this command block that will say two. And now before saying 3, it will actually generate a delay. So before saying 3, it will actually turn this command block on. So data merge block, this one, it will turn it on. And okay, this command block will turn itself off just for convenience. And only then we will actually say 3. So now if we run this crazy chain, 
we are actually gonna get the commands in the right order. But as you can see, it actually took a little bit of delay to get there. So we actually, instead of doing this all in one tick, this happened in three different ticks. And uh, yeah, this is the basic problem with this setup, that uh, it works, the command blocks are in the right order, but only for the initial function. So this function right here is calling another chain, okay? But if this chain also calls other chains, okay? It's not 100% sure that this chain is gonna be executed in the correct order regard, uh, relative to this chain, because this chain could have more uh, gaps. So it's really hard and impossible to fix it using this setup, and this setup only makes things worse, I think. So if we try to play the map now, I think it's even worse, I think it doesn't even hit play. Uh, yeah, oh wait, so far so good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of works, but there is no block, so yeah. So the way the block actually works is that a function is setting it to air, and another one is actually setting it to the block. And, uh, you know, since they are running at the wrong time, uh, maybe the one that is setting it to air runs every time, and the other one doesn't run as fast, so the block is invisible, and so the map is unplayable. But at least we don't get completely spammed. But yeah, so this is it. This is what I tried to do, and it was a really fun adventure to code this through. And honestly, if somebody has like a, a really genius idea on how to make this work, uh, I would be all ears. Because I mean, technically, it's possible. Both coding languages are Turing complete. So you should be able to do this, but now only because a coding language is Turing complete, it doesn't mean that you can execute the stuff in the same amount of time. So one way to fix this would be to somehow slow down the execution of all of the commands by just the right amount of ticks so that everything falls back in order. But now naturally if you do this, your map will literally be slower, so it will take longer for your code to execute, and maybe in some fast paced maps, or even some mechanic based maps like this one, it's not gonna work. But one thing is for sure, using command blocks, you can never ever ever trigger command blocks wirelessly using a data merge block. There is literally no way to do that, I tried to search the web and there were some crazy people being like but if you place the command blocks in the right place, in the right position, then maybe Minecraft will execute them before the other one, so you should be able to do it. But you know, I cannot uh, choose the position where I place the command blocks and uh, even choosing the relative position, even if we were to do something and change the execution order, it wouldn't be enough. I mean, uh, out of all of the different uh, scenarios that my converter can uh, uh, you know, convert, I will never be able to find a scenario where all of the commands are relatively in the right place. I mean, there is always gonna be uh, a contradiction or uh, an impossible situation. There is no way, uh, you know, uh, I can put the chain in the correct order, or at least not that I can think of. But yeah, this still was a really fun adventure. I uh, really hoped until the very end that, you know, I could actually make this converter work. But I mean, this just proves me that command blocks are useless. Like, why would you ever go from data packs to command block? I only did that for fun, and see where it took me, it, it almost drove me insane. So yeah, taking all of the command blocks and turning them into a data pack is the actual way to go, and that's what you actually should do with your life, not anything else. So you can use my converter that I showed in the previous video to do just that, and you can just forget this project ever existed. Also, I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but I'm preparing a part 3 to this, you know, now trilogy of videos because I really want to show you something that I didn't create, that, but that someone else created, that is much cooler than what I did. And uh, when you guys see it, you're gonna love it so much. So yeah, stay tuned for that. So yeah guys, leave a like if you enjoyed this style of videos, and if you wanna see more and uh, stuff like that, you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell, so you're notified when new videos come out. And yeah, go play Mechanism and uh, all of that stuff, and uh, have fun, bye!